Documentary filmmakers often use photographs to tell a story. Of course, when watching a film, there's nothing worse than having a photograph just sit there on the screen. So filmmakers have long employed a technique called pan and zoom, or pan and scan, to move the camera across the images and give them more life. The earliest such effects were done using still photos pasted onto animation stands, but it is now much easier to create these types of animated slideshows through software. The technique is often referred to as the Ken Burns effect after the documentary filmmaker. In the last few years, filmmakers have begun infusing photographs with an added sense of realism by injecting a sense of parallax as the camera pans over a still scene. The technique, which we will call 3D pan and scan, is now used extensively in documentary filmmaking. Here we are showing some examples from the 2002 feature-length documentary called The Kid Stays in the Picture. 3D pan and scan is now replacing traditional 2D camera motion in documentary films as well as TV commercials and other media because it provides a much greater sense of depth and therefore an overall more compelling and lifelike experience. However, creating such effects from still photos is painstakingly difficult. To create the effect from a set of stills, each photo must be manually separated into different layers and each layer's motion animated separately. In addition, the background layers need to be painted in by hand so no holes appear when a foreground layer is animated away from the original position. In this paper, we look at how 3D pan and scan slideshows can be created much more easily. We use a small portion of a light field and depth information. This data could be captured with a light field camera and depth inferred using multi-view stereo. In our specific implementation, we build a light field from a few photographs and a handheld camera. Using this data, we automatically produce a 3D pan and scan effect allowing users to influence and edit the result. We produce these effects with the following goals in mind. The result should conform to cinematic conventions currently used in documentary films. We should consider content, consider parallax and faces when generating an effect. Finally, we want real-time editing and viewing with no popping artifacts. We have examined hours of documentary footage in order to extract types of camera moves filmmakers most commonly employ. We have then classified these camera moves according to a very simple criterion the number of subjects of interest in the scene. In our research prototype, we use a simple off-the-shelf face detector to determine the number of subjects of interest. If no faces are detected, we assume there are no subjects of interest. If two or more are detected, we take the largest two faces as the two subjects of interest in the scene. For scenes with no specific subject of interest, we use one of two types of establishing shots. These shots depict the entire scene without focusing in on any specific part. In the establishing dolly, the camera moves across the scene in whichever direction maximizes visual parallax. In an establishing dolly out, the camera starts in close and dollies back in order to reveal the entire scene. For scenes with a single subject of interest, two types of camera moves are commonly used. The first uses a depth dolly to slowly move the camera in towards the subject. A variant of this move involves reducing the depth of field to bring attention to the subject. The other type of camera move sometimes used with a single subject of interest is a kind of special effect known as a dolly zoom. The camera is dollied back at the same time as the lens is zoomed in to give an intriguing and somewhat unsettling visual appearance. Finally, for scenes with two different subjects of interest, the camera typically dollies from one subject to the other. Here is an example from reference footage and one of our automatically generated results. There are two variations of this move. First, a low depth of field is used, and the focus is pulled from one object to the other. In the other, the depth of field itself is changed. We use an optimization to plan camera moves, searching over the set of valid camera viewpoints. That is, viewpoints that can be rendered with small holes that are easily impainted. We also maximize visual parallax because our user study shows that people prefer camera moves with clear 3D. To demonstrate an optimization, we use a single subject of interest dolly in camera move. The user can use the region of interest detected by the off-the-shelf face detector or select their own, as we did in this video. To find valid viewpoints, we sample the search space along the z-axis for each point on a 12 by 12 xy grid. The grid is chosen to span the extent of the input viewpoints. The high frame rate of the interactive renderer makes this search feasible. To reduce the size of the search space, we set the camera pointing direction and focal length to center the subject of interest. We choose starting and ending points that maximize parallax. 
We measure parallax by measuring the area of occluded regions between the two viewpoints. Specifically, we project the rendered scene at the starting viewpoint into the ending viewpoint, and vice versa, summing the area of the holes. The result of this optimization can be previewed and edited in the interactive viewer and then exported to the high quality offline renderer. Using this classification, we can generate a 3D pan and scan slideshow completely automatically. To create this slideshow, some 3 to 10 photos were taken of each scene with an ordinary camera from slightly varying positions. Our system recovered depth using structure from motion and multi-view stereo, determined the number of objects of interest using face detection, and generated an appropriate 3D camera move, all automatically. In each case, the particular camera move was selected randomly from among the possibilities determined to be suitable, according to the number of faces in the scene. While the automatic effect generation provides good results in most cases, we have also created an interactive interface to provide users with more control and allow them to choose their own preferred camera moves or specify more complex motions. The interactive viewer allows the user to explore the 3D scene and experiment with all the camera effects, including depth of field interactively. While the rendering quality is not quite as good as the offline renderer, it manages to convey a very similar appearance to the final result, while running at 30 frames per second on commodity graphics hardware. Here, we are showing how to author a depth-dependent saturation effect. We can use images from other cameras, such as Todor Georgiev's Integral Lens Camera and the POP9 camera that is sold by Lomography for $50. Despite strong chromatic aberrations in the prototype camera, we obtain promising results as shown here. Finally, here is one more slideshow created with our system.